What up, y'all? It's T-Turn. As you know, I've been putting out this theory since the new games were announced about an A legendary that would counterpart Zygarde. And in this video, I'm going to give my best idea as to what this A legendary can be. Now, the truth is, in terms of a best idea, this is what I've been kind of trying to build up to. In terms of the best idea it can be, there's three of them. But two of them are kind of complicated. But the first one is pretty straight on. So I'm going to explain it here. So the gist of my thought process is that Zygarde has been searching for a certain Pokemon that specifically threatened the ecosystem in the past. And the reason Zygarde takes his time or seems to wait for the most dangerous moment before he does something is because he's specifically looking for the threat of this A Pokemon, which is why it's on the cover that way. Pokemon Legend ZA. It could be looked at as AZ flipped in a creative way, but also the Z and Zygarde versus the A, which is the original dangerous Pokemon. I made a video recently about what the A legendary could be, which is the dormant ultimate weapon. And it's a good video that explains the oddities with the ultimate weapon. I'll link it at the end of this, but we're building on this theory for this video and taking it to another level. And yeah, I'm just going to tell you my idea first and then I'll explain my actions after. So I think the ultimate weapon, in some way, it was created to mock something the ancient Kalosians know to rebuild something that existed a long time ago and so the ultimate weapon are blueprints in the image of a certain thing and if you feed the ultimate weapon enough power that it needs which there's different ways to do this but the main way would be by feeding it a lot of Xerneas power and Evelto power that the image it would revert into is a giant tree this would be the A legendary. And then if the tree wants to condense itself into a tiny Arceus-like Pokemon with incredible power, then that would make for a cool cover. So we have the cover, Pokemon Legend ZA. That's Zygarde clashing with A. Now, as for why the tree, I'm going to explain it like this. I've said it before, but Pokemon X and Y's legends seem based off Norse mythology, which is one of the most creative mythologies out there. There's a bunch of gods, nine realms. But when you actually look at what inspiration came from Norse mythology to X and Y, it's some of the weakest stuff. You would think Xerneas and Ivalto are based off something big, but all Xerneas is based off is like one of four random deers, and then Ivalto is just a random bird. They aren't based off anything too impressive. And so this is when this theory comes in, and this kind of links to some of the other ideas, so I'll try to keep it brief, but it's something like this. This tree that is the original A Pokemon, is the world tree in Norse mythology. So like I said, in Norse mythology, there's the nine realms, right? The world tree is essentially the center of the entire universe, of not just the universe we know, but all nine realms. And some of the realms include what would be like the heavens, as well as what would be like the hells. So this is a tree that sits in between life and death. The tree would contain all the mysteries of the universe. It kind of acts as like a reflection of the state of the universe. So if the universe is in peril, the tree would reflect that. It would start to wither and such. And also the tree represents, like I said, life, death, and rebirth. And it's like one of the biggest parts of Norse mythology. This world tree, the Yggdrasil, what's cool about it is, remember those four deers I was talking about, of which Xerneas is one of them? They live at the foot of this world tree. And the bird that Ivelto seems based off often flies and hangs out at the top of the world tree. So what you could have in ancient Kalos is a setting where this world tree originally did exist in Kalos and was providing them with all kinds of life and death. And Xerneas and Ivelto were little babies that hung out near the tree. And I'd have to explain this, but eventually the world tree would end up withering away or something. And so all you'd be left with is Xerneas and Ivelto who just contain remnants of its powers. But the world tree itself as the balancer between life and death would be the true origin to Xerneas and Ivelto's powers. Something would cause this world tree Pokemon to be destroyed. And its return, I suppose as the enemy, would be what happens in Legend ZA. Now why such a bright Pokemon? Why would it be the enemy? We'd have to see how the story plays itself out, but as we know with Game Freak, they can always flip things backwards, right? Like with the Momotaro story, Momotaro ended up being the bad one, well, in a sense. But here's what's interesting about Yggdrasil, right? Yggdrasil represents something very interesting, which if you reword what I said earlier about it connecting all the realms and being the meeting place of all sorts of creatures, being the center of the universe, it represents the stability of all creation the order of all creation so that's one pokemon well entity in norse mythology then you have another creature called jormungandr 
This is the World Serpent. So while the World Tree sits in the middle of the Nine Realms, Jormungandr is in our world, our, our realm, which is Midgard, and it's circling around the world, biting its own tail. But Jormungandr is actually a Pokemon of chaos that inevitably leads the world to its end. So Yggdrasil's order, Jormungandr is chaos, and Jormungandr seems to be, for some reason, what Zygarde is based off. So Zygarde is already written in the game as the order Pokemon. And we have it playing a chaotic role in actual mythology, even though who's actually writing the mythology, you'd have to figure out. But then you have the Yggdrasil, which is actually the order and balance of the world. And a world tree has nothing to do with anything you can see in Zygarde. If anything, the whole world tree side seems to fit more with Xerneas and Ivelto's side of stuff. They're the ones who actually live by the world tree at the center of the realms. The Xerneas, Deers, the Ivelto birds, and the world tree. Meanwhile, Zygarde isn't even near the world tree. So this is my idea, right? What if this is what's happening? And so what Game Freak did is they flipped it. They made Zygarde the good Pokemon that's keeping order. And they made the Yggdrasil the actual bad one that is... And if you catch it in-game at the end of Legends ZA and look at its entry, it would be called the Chaos Pokemon. Finally, the counterpart to Zygarde. It could be anything, right? It could be the classic tale of like this tree that existed back in ancient Kalosian days that granted people their desires, it granted them health and longevity, infinite fruits and all. And the more they used it, the more the tree grew until it started to suck the life force out of the earth and people and grew bigger and bigger into this evil take on the world tree, condensing from this tree into an actual Pokemon. And this is when its danger level is at its highest and when Zygarde shows up in history to defeat it. And so this way we've actually flipped our rows around. And so maybe what the ultimate weapon is, is the ancient scientists and engineers and all back in Kalosian days, they saw the power that was in the world tree and they wanted to recreate it for defensive purposes. And so what they ended up doing was essentially making something that was very close to that old A legendary Pokemon in the form of the ultimate weapon which is why when it takes shape slowly kind of looks like it's a tree first before it blooms into a flower because they decided to launch it with its existing weapon early right but what would have happened if you kept feeding it more and more energy it's like it would have blossomed into a whole tree again so essentially i'm making the Yggdrasil a parasite in this pokemon world and remember the Yggdrasil sits in the middle of nine realms that we're only one of including hell the realm of the gods, freaking some fairy realm and all the other ones, a realm of giants. So what you could have is it having the ability to summon creatures from a world beyond what we know. Which, while it sounds weird at first, imagine it summons a trio of creatures that could act as like a new legendary trio in this game, right? And what's cool about it is because they're like these interdimensional creatures, it could explain a cool idea, which is why Zygarde showed up so quickly to Alola. Because the invasion of these Ultra Beasts was a lot like the invasion back then when the Yggdrasil was at the peak of its power. It'd be like that's really why Zygarde was in Alola investigating because it was curious if the Yggdrasil came back here somehow. But then it saw the Ultra Beasts and realized they were something else and so it was just keeping a close watch. So yeah, I guess a cool trio you could take from the different realms is you could have a giant from one realm and then an elf from another realm <laughs> and then uh, like a ominous creature like from the hell realm. So that's a cool trio that would fight alongside the Yggdrasil. Listen, the legendary trio bit is far out. But I do like that you can explain Zygarde's Alola appearance with that. But yeah, the main idea here is that the A Legendary is an evil Yggdrasil inspired Pokemon. And so now to talk about the name, the name Yggdrasil, it starts with Y and all. But the way you say it, it kind of invites it to start with an A. So Pokemon can make a new name that at the base, it comes from the word Yggdrasil. A good A you can prefix it with is the Ash from Asgard. So you can make it a word that combines Asgard and like Yggdrasil, just to give some Norse inspiration to it. Call it Adrazil or something, but just spell it all funky. The only odd thing I can think about for this is that Xerneas already is a tree Pokemon, but Xerneas is not the world tree, not in the slightest. All it is is a life Pokemon, and he built a death Pokemon. Maybe you could say something like there are two dormant states as a cocoon and tree actually are inspired or 
a byproduct of how the original Yggdrasil Pokemon functioned, if somehow Xerneas and Evelto were born from that. So yeah, because I'm connecting this to the ultimate weapon, which is flower-like and the world tree, I imagine the ultimate form of this A legendary, if it condenses, would be a, a flowery or tree-like form. But something very perfect looking, like you know Arceus is very small and perfect? I imagine something like that, where it kind of looks very terrifying, that it contains pretty much all the power you see how big the ultimate weapon is right but then the world tree which is gigantic to contain all that in a small form would be what's terrifying and it would make a cool counterpart to how big perfect zygarde is and it would have to beat this small thing up anyhow that's my theory make sure i shank that like button and let me know your thoughts i'm just trying my best to create fun discussions okay i got a bunch of ideas for this so inevitably i will make a video on the kind of more complicated ways the a legendary could turn out which takes from Norse mythology again, but they're cool ideas, man. I hope y'all enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.